Hikaru Nakamura's five most amazing queen sacrifices. This deserved a blazer. That's how good the examples are, how stunning they are, how amazing they are. See if you can spot Naka's moves and make sure you'd like and subscribe to this channel. This first example is maybe his most famous example. He's got the black pieces against strong grandmaster Krasenko. And after the move D takes C4, Krasenko played knight to C6. Now, this has the idea that after rook takes C6, white plays bishop takes F6. And this is where we start. The queen is attacked and white is trying to take the bishop on E7. What stunning idea did Hikaru find here? And how did he follow it up? See if you can analyze as deeply as the Naka monster did. Well, he now played, boom, queen takes F2. Oh, la, la, la. Look at that for a stunning move. And after king takes F2, the bishop moves into C5 with check. And the king hunt now starts. White moved his king up to f3. Other options are no better. For example, if he tries blocking it, the bishop can simply take that rook. And if the king comes to this square, we can keep taking things with check. And now we're going to win the white queen. And this leads to a winning position. Had the king gone back to f1, look at the power of those assassins. Cheekily pointing at the white king. And with the move c3, Rook e2 is the only way to stop that check in a decent way, but now a brilliant move, c2. What a stunning idea there. So we go back to the game. The king came walking to its death, and Hikaru said, okay, time to kill. Rook to f6 check, king g4. Another piece comes flying into the action, knight to e5 check. And this position is very bad. All the black's remaining pieces are trapping that king out in the open like no man's land the king is about to be taken down the king steps to g5 and now rook g6 king h5 and here a very nice move f6 this threatens rook h6 which is checkmate because we're covering the g5 square and that white king is clearly in too much danger white tried rook takes e5 but now another black rook came in the check and after king h4, the next move forced resignation, bishop to c8. I love these quiet moves that Hikaru played here in the middle of the storm. Did anyone see all the way up to this position? That's kind of how far you need to see if you want to be Hikaru's strength. And with this move, rook h6 and other ideas are really not going to be stopped here. So white resigned. This next one was taken from the Speed Chess Challenge on chess.com. And we have the very talented, brilliant player, Aronian with the white pieces against Hikaru. And it's only a five minute game, making the next couple of moves even that more stunning. Now, Bishop E7 was Aronian's idea to keep attacking the Black King. And it does look like the Black King is under some damage danger here. But look how Hikaru turns the position around. Queen takes e7. Oh yeah, Aronian, you're not attacking me. I'm gonna have some fun against you. Yeah, boy. And now after knight takes e7, king takes e7. Well, black has given up the queen, but as we're gonna shortly see, it's the white king, which is in a lot of danger with stuff like rook g8 being the immediate threat. The game continued, queen takes b7, and now just king d7, making sure the white king the white king is still weak and the white queen can't get in the position. Queen takes a6, pawn takes c3, opening the bishop and threatening bishop here check. Queen b5 and now the king is surprisingly safe on this square. And after bishop to b6, the rook is going to come in this way. Queen to e2 stopping that but now my favourite move this whole combination, rook a4. Black finds a way to bring the rook over towards white's king and now the pressure is just too much. Queen to g2, and here, knight g4 check. That knight now defending, and after king h1, knight to e3, and white try queen to c6, but rook h3 check is completely winning, as we're gonna see the rooks coming over here next move, as well as other things. So Aronian resigned. A great example of turning defense into attack, something you guys should always try to do, strive 
for the initiative. In this next example, we jump back to 1999 and little Hikaru was still very dangerous. He's playing the wax man here and it's white to play. How did he break through defenses? And remember, you can use that pause button. Queen to h5 check. Just imagine sliding that move onto the board, how satisfying it would be. And this really has the main aim of releasing the bishop on d3. That bishop becomes extremely strong. For example, if the queen is captured, e5 check. And now the only move is f5, but after knight takes f5, black really has no defense. The bishop is now threatening to release itself. Rook g7 is another threat. And if you try to get rid of the knight, just bishop takes f5 is checkmate. A lovely move. Black tried king g8, but after queen g6, it's clear to see that white is completely winning. Great play from Hikaru yet again. Now, this is Boris Gelfand with the white pieces against Hikaru of black. And I have looked at this position before in my series on the King's Indian defense. If you're a premium member on chess.com, you can view that series. Now, here, Hikaru's queen has been on pre for a number of moves. He doesn't actually get the chance to sacrifice it. But rather than now moving the queen, he plays bishop h3. And this is a beautiful move because if the queen is captured here, this is checkmate. And the fireworks continue. White plays bishop to f1, covering that square. And can you now see what Hikaru played? I love this move. One of my favorite ever Hikaru moves. Queen to d3. And yes, I know I've looked at this before, but I had to include it again. It's just so beautiful. The idea is, again, if the queen is taken, g2 is free. And if the bishop is taken, we can come into f3 and then g2 with checkmate. And in this position, really, white has no defense. He tried knight takes e5, but now the queen is again left on pre with bishop takes f1, bishop g2 to fret, and eventually Hikaru just takes a knight on c3. A lovely sort of series of moves there, just leaving that queen to be captured, but it can never be captured due to the checkmate frets. Beautiful. Those of you with a great memory may just recall how Magnus Carlsen defeated Sergei Karyakin with what's been called the best ever checkmate in the last game, last move of the World Championships. But in actual fact, the sequence and the pattern that Magnus used was used first by Hikaru. And in this game, played well before that World Championships, it's now Hikaru to move. He plays rook g1 check, and after king to a2, can you see the stunning move that forced resignation immediately? And if you know that pattern, and chess is all about patterns, so the more patterns you learn, the better you get. What move now? Can you see? Remember the pattern in the, in the game? Can you see it? Queen takes a3 check. And I love this move because whatever happens, rook a1 is going to be checkmate next move. Exactly the same sort of sequence we saw, but Hikaru got it in first. Well done, Hikaru. So which of those five examples was your favorite queen sacrifice? Do leave your comments below. Please make sure you like and subscribe to this video. There's many other videos in this series where you can look at stunning moves, stunning ideas to hopefully improve your play. I'll be back with more videos soon. Goodbye and cheers for now.